Good. Well, good evening, everyone. And on behalf of the Village of Cary and the Board of Zoning, Planning and Appeals, I'd like to hereby call this meeting to order on this Thursday, August the 13th at approximately 7 p.m. The year is 2020. We have a quorum of members. And at this time, I'd like to ask our Director of Community Development, Mr. Brian Simmons, to please call the roll. Jasper? Here. Duda? Here. O'Loughlin? Here. Graziano? Here. Kretschmer? Here. Williams? Here. Walrath? Here. Corey? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to rise with us for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you very much, everyone. So, folks, you may have heard me mention that um, at our last ZPA meeting on the 9th, that one of our members had relocated out of state. And we subsequently um, have a replacement for that member, and it is, in fact, Mr. Rick Dudek. And I'd like to formally extend uh, our welcome to you, Mr. Dudek. Uh, I think some of you know Mr. Dudek, uh, previously served in the village of Kerry at least two terms. And if I remember correctly, also over in Mundelein. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like to formally welcome you, uh, welcome you aboard. We're all looking forward to working with you. We know you'll bring a different dimension for us here at the ZPA. And perhaps, Mr. Dudek, I could turn it over to you for any opening remarks you may have. Uh, really not anything other than just to uh, say thank you for your uh, faith in me and the, uh, what I believe I will bring to this committee and hopefully to the village as I, I did for my 10 years on the board. So I'm excited about it. Uh, frankly, I, I'm, uh, I never thought I'd be sitting up here again. Uh, so, you know, you never say never, right? Just like uh, the James Bond movies. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, welcome back. We're looking forward to working with you. And if there's anything that any of us can do, this is a great group of men. And um, anything we can do to assist you um, in the orientation and onboarding, please uh, raise your hand, let us know. Happy to help in every way we can. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Welcome Thank aboard. You. Thanks. So, um, gentlemen that are here, um, typically the way we do our meeting is that Mr. Simmons would give us a high-level overview of the application, um, and that's going to occur this evening, and then we're going to subsequently turn it over to yourselves for a more in-depth presentation. Um, and for those listening online, the way we typically do this is that um, the ZPA members may have questions um, for both Mr. Simmons and also for the petitioner during the presentation. Typically, we wait to the end, but because it is a rather comprehensive presentation, you may find some of the ZPA members asking questions along the way. So thank you in advance for your understanding for that. Once we uh, conclude that portion of the meeting, then we open it up to the public. For those of you that are assembled here, you may have seen a sign-in sheet in the back. Um, it is a matter of public record, and if you do want to speak, we simply ask that you state your name and address for the record. For those of you that are unaware, the meeting does get recorded and placed on the Village website. Tonight's meeting is kind of a hybrid model. Uh, it's going to be recorded on both YouTube and on Zoom. And so when we get to that public portion of the meeting, if there's people that are attending via Zoom, Mr. Simmons will tell me that we have someone asking questions via Zoom, and we'll make sure that those questions get asked on their behalf. So that's kind of the, the process. And then once we conclude that portion, uh, the ZPA members themselves may have questions amongst themselves. We take a vote on the application. And then in this case, um, it'll be delivered to our elected officials who become the final arbiter of our meeting this evening. So that's the process that we'll go through tonight. And um, before I proceed um, to the actual case, uh, gentlemen, I just need to double check with all of you that you received your packages um, and that you would have received the meeting minutes. Um, from our last meeting of July the 9th. I have three meeting minutes that I'll ask for general consent via voice vote, but I just want to confirm with all of you that everybody has their meeting minutes from the last meeting. So I'll begin. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. So I'll begin with the first case. You'll recall this one was for um, the extreme clean car wash, and um, via general consent, uh, those in favor of approving those meeting minutes, which is ZPA case 05001, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the second request for uh, approval by a general consent will be for ZPA case 06002. This was for the Cary Fire Protection District. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Thank you, gentlemen. And finally, we have ZPA case 05003. Uh, this was for ALA architects and planners. Um, those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. And um, just to be um, transparent with all of you, Mr. Simmons and I were talking before the meeting. You might remember we actually had a case that was related to a fence. Um, those meetings weren't in, minutes weren't in here, and so that'll be next meeting. Okay? All right. All right, so without further ado, I'm now going to call village case number ZPA 0004. This is, in fact, for the Cary Park District. Uh, the address is 255 Briargate Road in Cary. And uh, the location is going to be at uh, 1890 Three Oaks Road. And um, Mr. Simmons, perhaps I can turn it over for, to you for a high level, and then we'll subsequently turn it over to the Park District. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's mentioned the request this evening is from the Cary Park District uh, related to the proposed development of the Cary Grove Park, uh, which is on a corporated parcel on the north east corner of First Street and Three Oaks Road. Uh, there's a few approvals that they're seeking this evening. Uh, would be for the map amendment to rezone the property upon annexation, uh, approval of the plan development that would guide development of the site, uh, and then finally uh, the plats um, related to the development as well for plat dedication and then annexation. Uh, as mentioned, the property is currently unincorporated in McHenry County. Uh, the the uh, the existing portion of the site that the park district has developed uh, remains unincorporated. It was developed under county regulations. Uh, as part of the process uh, here, they are proposing to annex the, the site into the village uh, so that the village would have regulatory control over the property, but also would allow uh, the park district to connect to uh, village uh, utilities and services, uh, the, the service property. Uh, the anticipated schedule for this project is the high level before I turn this over to the, the, the district to give their presentation. Uh, this evening would be the uh, zoning hearing or public hearing regarding the zoning requests, uh, specifically the map amendment, the plan development, and, and plan dedication uh, review. Uh, but in September, uh, should there be a recommendation from this board, uh, that would be forwarded to the village board, uh, at which time the village board would review uh, an annexation agreement for the property uh, that would guide uh, the development of the site um, and regulations uh, pertaining to the annexation into the, into the village. Uh, physically would adopt an ordinance uh, to annex the property uh, with include the plan of annexation uh, and then they would also review the recommendation from this board uh, on the matters that will be discussed this evening. Uh, following the park district's uh, presentation I'll summarize uh, uh, further uh, what the approvals are that are required or what is actually being requested of this board uh, but first I'll, I'll allow the, the park district to give an overview of their project and what they're proposing on the site. Uh, and then we'll get into the, uh, the details of the zoning uh, aspects of it uh, and what approvals are requested this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Simmons. And so, um, Mr. Jones, I assume you're going to begin the Park District presentation? All right, well, welcome. Good to see you again. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, good to be back here uh, in front of this group again. It's different than last time I was here, but uh, still good to be back here. Usually means we're we're moving forward on something and uh, projects are are happening within the the community. I want to introduce our, our team that's here tonight. So far left we have Frank Parisi with Williams Architects, who will be uh, coming up here to speak and present uh, after I'm done. Uh, Doug Fair from Hitchcock Design Group. Uh, Mr. Fair will also come up and talk about the site plan for the project. Todd Richards. Uh, from HR Green, who's our engineer, and then Scott Puma, who is the uh, attorney for Cary Park District, is here with me tonight. So again, please, very pleased to be before you tonight and introduce our project, um, which is a new outdoor aquatic facility for the Cary community. Um, to make this project a reality, there's some things that we need to accomplish, and that's why we're here before you tonight. Specifically, we need to get Cary Grove Park into the municipal boundaries of the village of Cary. Uh, before I begin my part of the presentation, I would always like to express my thanks to Mr. Simmons. Uh, Mr. Simmons has been nothing but helpful uh, along the way uh, from a staff to staff perspective, and we're very thankful for that, uh, for his guidance and, and help for everybody that's uh, here tonight. Um, 
All the members of our team tonight are going to introduce specific uh, elements of the project. They're going to walk you through a PowerPoint and they're going to uh, share with you the site plan. That's okay. It's showing here, it's not showing online. Okay. I'm not going to use that. Uh, Frank will use that when he comes up. Um, but since they're going to talk about those things, what I want to discuss and what I want to present is how we got to this point. How did the Cary Park District arrive with this project? Why are we interested in what we're here before this board this evening? Um, our project that we have that's initiated all this involves the construction of a new outdoor aquatic facility to replace the community's 45-year-old pool. The founding residents who pushed for the creation of a Cary Park District did so with the primary purpose of bringing a pool to the Cary community. They were successful with this, and that pool that was brought forth by those founding residents is the same pool that's in use today. Uh, at the time the existing pool was constructed, the population of Cary was between 4,500 and 6,000 people. Today the population of the Cary Park District is three and a half times that size and stands at somewhere about 22,000 people. Uh, the current uh, pool is outdated, it's underutilized, and underserves the community. The new outdoor aquatic facility is a community infrastructure project that will have a long lifespan that will likely equal the 40 plus years of the pool uh, in, in play right now. Uh, benefits to the community of this project will include improved quality of life to be gained from the availability of high quality recreation facilities, further connectivity of the multi-use trail system in town, positive impacts on home and resale values, as well as job creation, particularly in the age segments of high school and college age students. The Park District is probably the number one provider of employment, especially summer employment, to those that are in their teen years and early college years. Additional benefits for those who choose to use the new facility will include program options and amenities that will appeal to all age groups from toddlers to seniors. <coughs> Improved health and fitness, increased capacity and space to enjoy the facility and thoughtful improvements to shade and seating options. A replacement for the current pool was a top desire when the Park District uh, undertook its 2016 Comprehensive Master Plan update. Uh, to accomplish that update that was completed, uh, it was the result of analysis and input from residents, stakeholders, governmental peers, including the village, along with the Cary Park District Board. To create the plan, residents were invited to express their opinions via two open houses and workshops, as well as participation in a community-wide survey. Information to that effect that shows you the past history of that was included in your meeting packets tonight. One of the first action steps after we approved our comprehensive master plan was an update to the existing site plan for Cary Grove Park. The first site plan had been uh, created and uh, brought into play uh, with phase one, which is the three soccer fields uh, and the restroom facility that's out there. It hadn't been updated in a number of years. So in 2017, the Park District engaged the service of Hitchcock Design Group, went through a site master planning process, uh, had public feedback again as part of that process, and got resident comments, and went ahead and approved that. You're going to see the next update of that of that uh, of the site master plan this evening when Mr. Fair gets up here and presents it to you, but I think it's important to note that the 2017 version as well as the 2004 version included all of the elements that you see on the updated site plan. Basically, the pencil's been sharpened and it's been tied together better as we've moved on uh, over the course of time. Uh, in 2018, to support the aquatic uh, park project, our board engaged a feasibility study to explore various elements of this project, which include a program analysis, market analysis, conceptual designs, capital cost estimates, and operational pro forma, as well as, as, well as a fiscal review of the agency's financial capabilities to execute a project. Community engagement was again a part of the feasibility study. And in 2019, the board accepted the results of this study and directed that the agency move forward with the development of the project that we're here presenting tonight. To achieve this project and bring a new outdoor aquatic facility to the community that's going to benefit the residents of both the park district and the village, we all must work together. Cary Grove Park is presently not within the municipal boundaries of the village of Cary. And as Brian stated, we are uh, here tonight to talk about annexing the property into the village so we can access water and sewer to support the facility and achieve the proper zoning for the property to support phase two site development as well as future phases for the property. The components that make up this facility that Mr. Parisi will walk you through include a leisure and lap pool, 
slides, water amenities, seating, the bathhouse, concession, and support buildings. Those amenities are estimated to cost seven to eight million dollars. There are site improvements that have to be completed. Those include provision, bringing water and sewer to the site, utilities, mass earthwork, parking lots, trails, stormwater detention features. Those parts of the project are estimated from anywhere from three to four million dollars. So we're talking about a total estimated project cost of 11 to 12 million. The Park District is proud to say that it will use existing financial resources to implement this project and operate it effectively. There will be no increase to property taxes to construct or operate the facility. If all continues to move forward as planned, the bidding for this project is anticipated in early 2021. The groundbreaking and construction shortly thereafter with the expectation of an opening date for the new facility in the summer of 2022. In 2021, the Park District will celebrate its 50th year anniversary. The groundbreaking for this project will be an element of our celebration of our 50 years. The Park District Board believes this is a fitting achievement that ties back directly to the vision of the founding residents of the agency. Uh, Mr. Simmons uh, gave a brief overview, but he outlined specific items to our project and things to be considered by this board this evening. Our team is here tonight to answer questions of the board and others, provide insight if necessary, and illustrate further numerous matters associated with our request to be considered by this board. We believe we've provided substantial background and plan to support our request and are hopeful to receive a positive recommendation from you all tonight. So with that, that's going to conclude my part of the presentation. And if it's okay, Chair, I'd like to turn it over to Frank Breezy to come up here and walk through a, a slide presentation. Or Doug, I'm not sure who's going to start. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So um, before we do that, I just want to check with the gentleman because sometimes there's questions yep. right at the beginning. So I just want to double check. I know there's a lot of material to cover, but I want to give the gentleman any opportunity to ask questions at this moment. So hearing none, we'll proceed okay. uh, to Mr. Fair. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Fair. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Happy to be here to discuss this exciting project. All right, so once again, my name is Doug Fair with Hitchcock Design Group. I'm a landscape architect. I'll launch into the presentation. Uh, just the brief agenda. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Um, so moving ahead to the uh, updated master plan, uh, picking up on the 2017 plan and making some minor adjustments, uh, mostly for the items that had already been noted um, for um, various um, um, site grading that's needed, reorienting uh, some of the, the driveways um, to account for the various features, um, uh, better orienting the supporting parking um, and the uh, pedestrian and vehicular routes, and um, updating some of the locations of the aquatic center and the uh, future rec center. Uh, the north half of the plan remains in intact for the most part. Um, adjusting the parking area slightly, um, but the ball fields from the 2017 plan uh, pretty much remain as is. So zooming in a little closer to um, in on the up master plan updates, uh, you can see the aquatic center, um, just some minor adjustment for the location due to the site topography. Um, the rec center adjusted as well and reoriented it to um, create better efficiency of parking and pedestrian and vehicular circulation. 
um, and the planting design um, highlights these features, uh, framing views as you um, enter the site and move your way um, north to south, um, and then the various features within, uh, highlighting with low plant material and um, shade and ornamental trees uh, throughout. So for the uh, proposed next phase, the proposed development, um, you can see here, I just want to make sure my cursor is showing up. Uh, the thick dash line here represents the uh, project limits. Again, um, up here more for the, the topography and the earthwork that's needed. Um, and then showing the, um, as you uh, make your way in the entry drive, going past the uh, stormwater basins um, that are needed. Um, the main parking lot here um, again, highlighting the, the, the main entry route and the vehicular drop-off area um, with shade trees within the parking lot, uh, low ornamental trees um, up against the foundation of the building, and various uh, perennials and, and ground cover as well to um, highlight the, the main entrance of the um, aquatic center. Um, just one second, Mr. Fair. I just want to double check with the gentleman. I didn't know you were going to conclude. Um, gentlemen, questions for Mr. Fair before we proceed to the next speaker? Right now. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I'm Frank Parisi with Williams Architects. So we're the prime uh, architecture firm for the project. What I'd like to do is, as Mr. Jones had mentioned, I'd like to walk you through the particular amenities that are going on uh, inside of the aquatics facility that are proposed uh, for the development in this phase two. So I'll give a slight overview of the design intent that uh, the Park District had charged our team with, uh, along with the landscape design. Uh, Mr. Jones had mentioned that it's basically our intent is to actually develop a family aquatic center uh, that was multi-generational that would go anywhere from a toddler to a senior. Not only did it involve aquatics uh, fitness components, but other programming elements were being incorporated inside of the facility as well, even taking into consideration the possible use of what we'll call it non-summer hours. And I'll, I'll share what some of those amenities are within the facility. Um, just a, an overview uh, of the plan before I get into the details. Uh, Mr. Ferrer talked about the approach into the building with the main drive and adjacent parking. I'm gonna try to use the cursor, just kind of point through uh, some of the amenities that we have there. So that entry drive actually comes from the south and as you approach the building, you have different components uh, within the aquatics facility. Um, so a bathhouse, a party concessions, support amenities. Sorry, is that me or that you? Was you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what happened there? Um, and then the actual uh, pools are divided into different zones, uh, considering the different age groups, uh, anywhere from a toddler in a leisure pool uh, configuration to anywhere from lap swim to deeper water. Um, that's further to the uh, west, and then along with uh, slides that are supporting. Uh, Mr. Fair had mentioned that there's a significant grade change to the, to the property. We want to uh, take advantage of those for taller slides as well. But we do have raised decks as part of our configuration um, and additional lawn area. So for to start uh, working from the west to the east, so the lap pool is really um, an eight lane lap pool. As part of the, the, the additional amenities that we provided with that, there is in the deeper water, which is the dark blue configuration. Um, it has uh, a drop slide, a diving board, and actually a climbing wall as well as part of that uh, configuration. It has a one and three meter board, along with eight lanes for competition swim. Uh, the park district doesn't have an affiliation with the Barracudas in town as well. Did so you say does or does not? It does have an affiliation Thank with you. the Barracudas. Thank and you. then that's supporting uh, that particular partnership with them with some spectator seating um, in case, when there are meets at the facility itself. And of course, with any type of facility, there's always the lounging component of it. Each one of these uh, pools has surrounding deck and various um, opportunities and different types of opportunity for shade. So that is something that is uh, predominant in design and aquatics, um, very sensitive to that nowadays, obviously. Uh, and I'll show a couple of those. So those triangular or square pieces with the X's and as those are proposed as cabanas. So there could be family lounging areas within that particular configuration. As well as we do have lawn areas that are also 
um, outside of the actual hard pavement area, which we've included. So that would be, I'm working that one backward. That's probably a larger aid group. When you get actually to the leisure, it actually probably targets anywhere from the toddle, toddler to the preteen and has a zero depth entry at the south end. And I would describe that as a zero depth as you walk in and the, as you get further to the north of that pool, it actually gets deeper. As part of that, we've incorporated, we've actually incorporated shade over the, um, I apologize, a little sensitive. Why do I not stop? I'll stop. If you want to use it. the mouse, you can. I got a wireless mouse here. Um, the, the actual leisure area has a shade over the top of it, actually over the water for um, a leisure component there. And as you get into further amenities, we do have lily pads, uh, which is off to the right of the pool. And actually, we do have a swim channel vortex pool uh, that has a lounging component and resistive channels. Um, not all of those are only for entertaining. Mr. Jones had mentioned fitness and something that we were talking about as well. Um, in addition to just learning how to swim, there's also opportunities for resistive walking inside of, the, um, inside of that vortex pool that we talked about, or deep water aerobics, or scuba lessons. So those are some of the things that the park district is entertaining as part of the amenities that go with that. Um, again, similar to this, deck areas that surround the pool for lounging for families. And of course, the, the areas are separated intentionally from a security perspective. Um, you don't want little kids being in deeper water. And so the, the bodies of water actually are centrally located uh, or are connected to each other. So even a parent can see their preteen and their toddler within a, a relative location between those two. Part of the support amenities include uh, a bathhouse. So we have three different building components. The first one is the bathhouse. This is very uh, basic and planned. There's toilet rooms, administrative functions in there. Family toilets was something that is very predominant in, in any type of uh, recreational activity right now. And those are all centrally located with a passage as you come through. And I had mentioned the positioning from a security perspective. We also have an administrative function that basically views both pools from a centralized location. That would be the manager and the lifeguards as well. Um, the second building, um, so what we try to do is because we're trying to be sensitive to the site is we broke these buildings up. This one has, actually has a, um, a concessions component with a concessions deck immediately adjacent to it. And it has a party rental room as well, which is to the left of that plan. Um, so the intent there is not only to host any type of program lesson that's in there, um, maybe a birthday party rental, but also we talked about the opportunity to program that off season. So there is an opportunity to use that room basically 365 instead of the warm months during the year um, that would support the aquatics operation. So that's something that we had discussed with the park district and was their objective as well. Very basic here, this is the filter building. Um, it supports all the, we'll call it, everything that makes the thing work, everything that's back a house, right? Everything in there wants to work, and we do have screened uh, toilet and uh, trash enclosures, I apologize, and as well as uh, dedicated storage for the swim team uh, that the park district has an affiliate for. I'd like to show next is um, our look to the building. So there's something similar to the multi-generational. What we wanted to do, um, the village of Cary and the village of, and the park in the Cary Park District. Um, obviously, I have to compliment Dan and his team uh, for a 50-year, quasi 50-year-old pool or 40-year-old pool. It is an outstanding. When I took up back a house tour, it's in outstanding shape. So compliments to the park district for maintaining that asset. So one of the criteria that we had um, as part of our design was to start emulating some of that. So we wanted to create a functional, sustainable design that would uh, obviously stand the test of time. The aesthetic of the building is reflective of the programming elements that are part of the aquatic center. So we started using um, natural materials, of course, and long-lasting materials. So we do have brick and fiber cement panels as part of our look. Uh, we do have a trellis that goes in between where the family changing aspects are from the control aspect to the building. It, it is welcoming as you're going into the aquatic center. It signifies entry that uh, Mr. Fair had talked about as you approach the building overall. And part of our sustainable features is the, uh, the panels at the top. So the white panels that are at the top of the building in the angled portion are fiber cement, but also we're going to intermix them with translucent panels. So uh, the inside, even though they're very functional, will still receive natural daylight. Uh, from a sustainability perspective. 
we wanted to show uh, a view from inside the Aquatic Center looking back and on the building itself to the left is where that administrative lifeguard area is. And uh, that's the shade you kind of see in the yellow going across the, uh, the pool and the, in the leisure pool. The other buildings actually have similar looks and scale. Um, so we, we're trying to show you a composition in the lower image where you look at the composition of both not only the bathhouse but also the concession building party room which is to the left of the, of the elevations. And, and there's a detail elevations um, right in the upper, upper portion which re replicate the, um, the design of the bathhouse. Um, to the upper left, uh, we also do have an entrance to that party rental room, we'll call it from outside the gate. So there is an opportunity um, during the off um, aquatic months that you have direct access but still have it secured as well. And that's where that uh, young lady is with the bike on the left hand image. Similarly, we're trying to show the composition of the buildings in context with the filter building. So going from left to right, that's the bathhouse, the concessions building, and the filter building on the right. It still has the same look and character, so it would work very nicely to the scale of the site. These buildings are no taller than 16 feet, so six, pardon me, 16 feet tall at the highest points. I think that's the last slide at our end, so before I walk away, Thank if there you are any much, questions, I'd like to thank everyone. I would like to resonate uh, Dan's, um, Mr. Simmons was extremely helpful in making us understand the process. Um, and um, I think it went very smoothly, so thank you for that. He does a great job. I agree. He does. Um, before you adjourn from your comments, uh, Mr. Richards, gentlemen, any questions here? I, I may just have one. Um, I may have missed this in the application, but obviously the footprint is much larger in the new location. And one of the things that I was thinking about, particularly with the younger children, are there security cameras around any of these pools, or how does that work for you guys? Uh, typically, we don't recommend security cameras within the body of water. Uh, the Park District does have lifeguards, and there are regulations that they have to follow by having lifeguards at every X linear feet of water, so that would be the security measure that goes along with that. Okay. Now, in the off-season hours, we do have concerns because it is an off-site. Um, so there are, will be security cameras um, around the bathhouse and the other buildings in case there, someone intrepidly wants to explore, let's say. Very good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for the explanation. Um, so if there's no other questions, um, let me just double check um, if there's another presenter here. There's not. At there our is end. not. No, no, sir. I can bring it back. All right, so we'll turn it back over to Mr. Simmons um, to give us uh, some further information now. So, uh, thank you to the Park District and the project team for their uh, presentation. I'll give a brief overview uh, just again to summarize what the requested actions are this evening for the board to consider. Uh, in addition to the information that uh, the Park District's uh, team provided, uh, just to reiterate uh, the request this evening, uh, there is a map amendment that's requested for this property uh, to rezone it from E1 to PO upon annexation. Uh, the plan development, which will include the multi-phase development of the park property, um, not just the phase two, but the entire uh, development of the site, as uh, Mr. Farr had uh, provided information on, uh, with various use exceptions and zoning departures within it. And then finally, the uh, plats is presented as well this evening. Uh, just a brief overview in the village's comprehensive plan. Uh, the subject property is designated for park and open space use. Uh, specifically, there's guidance within the plan uh, on page 76, uh, which speaks to the specific park uh, for an actively programmed community park facility. 
Uh, that would be a des destination uh, for major recreation uh, uses. The plan encourages that the village would annex the property uh, into the village and that would be appropriate for development of community centers, municipal facilities, athletic fields, and more intense recreational facilities and uses. Uh, the proposed map amendment uh, within the UDO, when any property uh, is annexed in the village, depending on its size, uh, it would be automatically designated a zoning classification and when it comes into the village. Uh, specifically, properties that are over one acre in size, as the subject property would be, uh, would be automatically zoned E1 uh, when it is annexed in the village. Uh, the map amendment uh, would seek to rezone that prop the property. Uh, when it is annexed uh, to a more appropriate uh, PO uh, park and open space district, uh, which is consistent with the proposed land use and future land use of the property. Uh, the code specifically uh, indicates the type of uh, standards that need to be met to uh, support a map amendment uh, in the petitioner's information that they provide as part of your packet. There are responses to those map amendment standards. Uh, specifically that the amendment should not be detrimental to the or endanger the public health, uh, consistent with zoning classifications of property within the general area, um, and would not, uh, a trend of development in general area supports the request. Um, to summarize a few of them, uh, as indicated in the staff report, staff believes that the proposed use uh, does comply with those standards and does recommend approval of the, the MAP amendment uh, upon its rezoning. Uh, additionally, within the, uh, the request this evening, they're seeking approval of a plan development uh, to, or to uh, regulate the development of the property over time. Uh, specifically within Chapter 7 of the UDO, there are standards uh, for plan development. Uh, parks uh, and open spaces are not required to go through this process. Uh, typically, uh, any non-single family residential uh, development uh, or park uh, development uh, would not would have to go through the process uh, for commercial or industrial spaces that are over two acres in size, but there is an exemption for park uh, uses that would not have to go through the, the PUD process. Uh, the petitioner is requesting approval of a PUD for this project specifically to garner or regulate the future phase development of the site. Uh, as the proposal this evening, uh, sp the first phase that will be constructed will be considered what is being re referred to as phase two of the park development uh, for the aquatic center and related uh, facilities. Uh, but the PUD would also grant approvals for future phases of phase three for the entire development of the site uh, for other uses that are proposed on the master plan. Uh, so with the proposals uh, requests this evening, the information that was in the packet uh, that will uh, re regulate what type of development will occur on the site in the future, not just in the, the upcoming uh, few years with the development of the aquatic center, but also will lay out what development could occur on the site uh, down the line. Uh, specifically, there's three phases to the development. Uh, phase one is what's already been constructed on site, includes the soccer fields, uh, playground, and various uh, athletic facilities in the front of the site. Uh, there's phase two, which is the proposal for the aquatic center related facilities. And then phase three um, is the more, uh, the balance of the site, the indoor recreation center, future athletic fields, uh, ball fields, and uh, parking on the site. Uh, the petitioner is requesting uh, as part of the development that uh, three use exceptions be granted for the project. Uh, specifically within uh, this, uh, due to the size of the site um, and the uses that are proposed, uh, there are specific uses that are permitted within the zoning ordinance for park and open space districts uh, with the use exceptions uh, if they're to be supported uh, would grant those specific uses to be allowed by right and would not require additional approvals from a zoning process to be developed. Uh, specifically, their uh, petitioners request an approval for a swimming pool and aquatic centers to be a permitted use, lighted athletic fields and courts, uh, indoor health and recreation facilities, and then additional requirements for accessory structures as well. Uh, again, this will allow for the phased development of the property in accordance with the master plan uh, proposed for the site uh, and would not require uh, future um, uh, requirements for future public hearings for specific uses if they were to be developed on the property compliant with approvals. Uh, there are various departures that uh, are being requested as part of the petition. Uh, first is location of accessory structures. Uh, the code limits this, uh, specifically uh, accessory structures to rear yards uh, behind a primary structure. Uh, the 
basic intent of that is for more residential uses or commercial type properties. Uh, obviously with this property is a larger site, uh, there's different types of uh, accessory buildings that will be proposed as part of the facility, uh, some of which would need to be, be located in front of uh, primary structures. Uh, so the petitioner is requesting a departure to allow for the emplacement of accessory structures within the front yards uh, of, the, of the property. Uh, also, landscape plans uh, through the uh, plan development ordinance, uh, they are not providing a landscape plan for the entire development uh, through phase three, uh, but they are providing plans through phase two of the project, uh, which will comply with code, um, and they're asking for a departure to not require a phase three at this time. Uh, phase three would be required uh, as part of the conditions of approval, as uh, staff is recommending, and also per the annexation agreement that's been drafted would be provided prior to the development of phase three um, and reviewed by the, the community development department at that time. Uh, the petitioner is also requesting a departure for fence height surrounding the aquatic center uh, pool area. Uh, code provides a maximum of six feet of height uh, for a fence. And they're asking for a departure to be able to install a fence up to eight feet on that location. Uh, there are provisions within the Unified Development Ordinance for fencing or safety netting around athletic fields uh, that would be exempt from the maximum six foot height. Uh, so there would be the potential uh, for those facilities in the future to have other fences or uh, safety netting installed that would be exceed that, that six foot height requirement. Uh, the petitioner is also re requesting a departure to be able to install uh, as, uh, uh, along with the use exception for athletic field lighting. Uh, the departure would be to establish maximums uh, for the maximum height for proposed uh, field lighting uh, and also require a minimum setbacks. Uh, specifically, they're proposing a maximum height of 75 feet, which is consistent with lighting elsewhere within the village currently and requiring a minimum 15 foot setback to any property line on the property. Uh, with the uh, nature of the site, uh, with the dedication of the first uh, potential right of way for First Street on the western portion of the site, uh, the boundary with the ComEd right of way on both the north and east property lines, and then you have Three Oaks Road to the south, uh, the 15 foot setback would re result in a, at least a 90 foot, 95 foot setback to any adjacent residential property. Uh, the light uh, operation of lighting uh, on the property would require be required to comply with UDO hours of operation for park uh, use. Uh, specifically, they would need to cease operations by 11 p.m. and then would need to comply with light levels at property lines as well. Uh, additional departure that is requesting uh, requested within the petition. Uh, the petitioner is seeking uh, requirements or departures to the bulk requirements for off street parking. Uh, specifically, parking would be provided at various stages. Minimum uh, parking spaces would be provided. Uh, at phase one, there currently are 175 spaces on the site. Uh, at the end of phase two, with the new uh, parking facility that will be constructed as part of the aquatic center. Uh, there would be a total of 335 spaces on the site, which would serve both the aquatic center uh, and the existing soccer fields. And then uh, uh, in phase three, uh, with total build out of the site, a minimum of 860 spaces would be required. Uh, the potential for phase three to be broken into sub phases um, does exist. Uh, and uh, at, if it is developed in components versus all at once, uh, there is the ability for the village to review uh, the, the proposed requirements at that point uh, to make sure that additional parking is required or provided to accommodate a, a smaller phase as well. Right. Uh, additional departures that are requested are related to monument signage for the property. Uh, the petitioner is requesting uh, approval for a maximum of two monument signs along Three Oaks Road. Uh, an additional two maximum uh, along uh, what would potentially be the for, uh, future uh, first street uh, should it be constructed. Uh, locations are shown approximately uh, on the site plan of where those may be located, um, but uh, per the UDO requirements, they would maintain a separation of at least 250 feet uh, between any of those signs. Uh, there would be additional signs that would be permitted interior to the property, um, whether it be wall signs on buildings, uh, monument signs adjacent to a building that would identify the, the structure or directional or informational build signs to uh, direct uh, traffic throughout the property as well. Uh, those additional uh, signage would be subject to review and approval by the village but would not require 
uh, additional relief uh, through a public hearing process for approval. <coughs> Finally, the uh, petitioner for uh, departures is asking for uh, waivers for the impact donations and fees associated with the development. Uh, those uh, impact fees generally are related to any new residential development that does occur, so there would not be uh, fees that would be associated with this project for development within the village, uh, but also if there are any off-site improvements uh, that we requested, we're, uh, the petitioner is requesting a waiver of uh, uh, those fees associated with any uh, off-site work that may be required. Uh, there also is a waiver requested for the construction schedule to increase a time period to apply for a building permit from one year to two years, and then also uh, allowing construction to commence within three years and extend that out for five years to uh, complete uh, phase two of the project. Uh, phase three uh, would not be subject to those time periods, but would be able to, uh, when they develop the property, uh, would be subject to the construction phase for that uh, in the future when construction starts, so it would have a similar five-year time period to uh, complete that with it. Uh, within the Village uh, Unified Development Ordinance, there are various standards for uh, plan developments, which are summarized in this slide. Uh, generally, the plan development should conform with the general uh, planning policies within the comprehensive plan, uh, limit uh, the impact on adjacent property, um, also provide for uh, adequate provision for ingress and egress for parking and traffic, um, and adequate buffering for, to protect uses within development and surrounding uh, properties. For modification standards or departures as proposed, uh, the, uh, the Unified Development provides additional guidance as well uh, related to the overall uh, design of the site, uh, integrated design, uh, location of higher buildings, uh, and, uh, and how the, the property is uh, sited from that perspective. Uh, in staff's analysis of the proposal, staff believes that they, they do comply with both the modification standards and the plan development standards. Uh, the way that the site plan has been laid out, uh, the more intense uh, recreational uses have been sited towards the center of the property uh, to limit any negative impacts that may occur to adjacent residential properties. Uh, and also uh, adequate stormwater drainage and utilities have been provided to serve the property uh, throughout uh, all the phases of development. Uh, finally, within the packet, there are a few uh, plats that are uh, presented. Uh, it's related to the development. Specifically, there's a plat to get dedication for uh, the future right-of-way for uh, an extension of First Street to the north. Uh, that would not be constructed as part of this project, but as part of their annexation uh, into the village. Uh, the right-of-way will be dedicated to the village of Cary for future consideration for uh, a future extension of First Street to the north. Uh, also, uh, but not for review this evening, is the plan of annexation just provided for references in your packet. Uh, that would be considered for the village board uh, at their meeting on September 1st. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, from a uh, staff summary, those are the actions that are requested this evening. Uh, based off staff's review uh, of the zoning petition, the information provided by the petitioner, uh, staff uh, believes that the uh, standards for both map amendment uh, and plan development and departures have been met in this case and would recommend, uh, should the ZPA concur with that assessment, I recommend that the ZPA approve uh, three motions as proposed, or presented on the slide. Specifically, approval of the map amendment to rezone the subject property from E1 single family residential to uh, PO park and open space district upon its annexation of the village. Approval of the plat of dedication as presented, and approval of the Cary Grove Park plan development uh, consisting of approximately 75 acres of recreational land uh, located uh, 1893 Oaks Road, uh, subject to the conditions that are listed in your staff report. Uh, per the conditions of the UDO, this uh, case is village board final. Uh, so the recommendation would be considered by the village board uh, during their next meeting, uh, should there be a recommendation this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Simmons. Well done. Um, before we um, open up to the public, gentlemen, questions for Mr. Simmons. Okay, hearing none, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time uh, of our meeting where we open it up to the public. So if there's anyone assembled here in the village hall that wanted to speak about this application or if we have anyone online via the Zoom application, uh, now is the time to uh, express your comments 
Uh, and I'm asking Mr. Simmons publicly if he has anybody online for Zoom. There's uh, one individual online uh, that's ob ob observing this point. Um, if they would like to comment at this point, there's a raise the hand feature, uh, or you can make sure to type in a uh, question, um, and I can present that to the board as well. Thank you. We'll give a moment uh, to see if that person wants to uh, raise their hands and type in a question. Do you have anything, Mr. Simmons? No, that's fine. No. Okay. I don't think we're going to have um, that, but um, we'll adjust accordingly. But I think what I'm going to do right now is um, move off the public comments section and um, see if the gentlemen uh, have any additional questions before I get ready to call the motion. Mr. O'Loughlin. Uh, I only had uh, two quick ones. Um, and seeing the the kind of the wavy design of the part of the of the drive through um, uh, any uh, comments or any uh, uh, talks with the uh, the fire department as to if this is uh, feasible to them or if they need any concessions made to them for fire and or rescue I, I believe mr. Simmons actually did float uh, the plan to the fire department <clears throat> as well as the police department and they seem to be very receptive to the access to the uh, aquatic center Okay, okay, and then I guess my only other question was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, relief from parking. I don't see an issue with it at all um, as it currently stands. Uh, however, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, you, you have some <clears throat> additional parking for high school during the day. Is that going to affect when the aquatic center is open? I actually could probably address that, Dan, if that's okay. Um, what we did with uh, present to Mr. Simmons is the, um, we'll call them the off-peak uses, right? <laughs> so the predominantly the uh, aquatic center will be open from May, late May to early September. Um, and their greatest peak is obviously off-peak off from the high school usage as well as the fields that are on the south. Okay. Uh, so we feel comfortable you with that. You feel comfortable with that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Those are my two. Thank you, Mr. O'Loughlin. Uh, gentlemen, other questions for the petitioner or Mr. Simmons? Hi, I, I have one. This is Neil. Hi, welcome, um, Neil. Just a, a question. I don't think it's that an issue, but uh, learning from past uh, challenges and our neighboring friends in Crystal Lake, is there anything that could be construed or be an issue with the homes other than the lights? Obviously, I'm referring to the bleacher fiasco over there. I just want to make sure that there's not going to be something that is overlooked regarding the home, residential homes. I'll try to address that a little bit further, Mr. Williams. I think you might be referring to the issue that was in Crystal Lake and the stands that were built close to residential. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that's, and it was too close to the, I think Mr. Simmons would tell us that um, he's probably double checked that, but uh, we have Mr. Um, Jones coming to the podium and we'll ask Mr. Simmons to comment on that as well. So that's a fair question. <clears throat> as I stated throughout my presentation, we brought forward plans for this project uh, and the site plan before the public uh, for feedback outside of anything required by the village on many occasions. Um, we don't believe that there is anything there that would cause an issue. Uh, the park district presently, um, a number that we talk about a lot, is that we have nearly 700 neighbors uh, that surround all of our properties and we feel that we are a good neighbor. Uh, we try to act accordingly to be respectful of, of those that, uh, that are adjacent of us uh, as well and have been doing that uh, for a long time. So we don't foresee that there's anything on here uh, that would cause a problem. Uh, I do know that uh, the aquatic park itself, now long term, you know, Mr. Williams brings up, you know, ball field lights and things like that. Those are in the, the long distance for us after we do this project. In terms of the aquatic center, um, there's a strong buffer that's already in place. There's a park that we already own that's already in place. And I believe the nearest residence is somewhere between 400 to 500 feet away from anything to do with the, uh, with the aquatic park at all. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Oh, I think we're good. Yeah. Um, Mr. Williams, um, does that address your question? Yeah, I was just, just wanted to make a point of re referencing the issue that was before. And again, all the information that I read and that 
we've discussed so far did not show that, but I just wanted to make sure that it was addressed so if someone, were, someone else was to bring it up at one point, we'd say what we talked about it. Yeah. And it would just to uh, indicate as well, part of that issue with that particular project uh, was a, a dispute between what uh, zoning control a municipality would have over a school uh, from a, right. a use perspective. Uh, in this particular case, with the park district use, they would need to comply with zoning regulations for the property. Uh, there wouldn't be no um, conflict of, uh, you know, a legal dis uh, dispute from that perspective. They would need to comply with zoning regulations for any structure that's constructed on the site. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, gentlemen, any other questions for the petitioner? I got a couple. Go right ahead, Mr. Graziano. Mike, guess. <clears throat> I didn't go through the the entire uh, traffic plan, but my my concern is if if I understand this correctly, we have one point of access into this entire facility. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, typically, uh, traffic plans are based on peak hours and and all that. All your activities here got nothing to do with peak hours on the existing roadway system. The peak hours are going to be when the games are over and everybody's trying to get the hell out of there. Uh, was there any estimate made of how long it's going to take to empty the park after a game? So, with only having one point of access. Are so, you speaking for a, a, a football game at the high school, or? For our Mr. Jones, please forgive me, but um, I think just so it's a matter of public record, so people can hear the conversation when they review it. Thank you very much for your understanding. I apologize. It's all right. Are you referring to activities at the Cary Grove High School when you use the term game? No, I'm talking about the use of the facilities in, in basically general. in phase three. Understood. Okay. But also with the aquatic center closes 11 o'clock i don't know if there's going to be 300 people there or what i just is there any, is there any thought given to an alternative access so we are doing an alternative access from an emergency standpoint that i don't think that we've highlighted at any of our presentation that would give the opportunity for police and fire to well, access was, from a secondary side that was As, a follow-up question okay so yes that is uh, part of the uh, the plan and uh, Mr. Parisi can show that on there, kind of where that's projected to be. In terms of the entrance exit to the facility, um, what you see there on the site plan is the the, the yeah. ingress egress to it. So, but we're also operating from the standpoint that when we get done with phase two of this project, um, that's going to take many of the resources that the park district has. And so phase three, when we talk about games and we talk about ball fields and lights and things like that, for us, those are things that are often, they're, they're off in the distance. Um, I don't want to say pushed off and, and not considered, but for us, they're, they're, they're future. Uh, they're certainly not going to happen two or three years from now. So and maybe, Frank, you want to talk a little bit about that emergency access? I apologize again. Not at all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jones. I can show that. That was actually a comment that came from the fire department as well. Uh, so one of the things we're committed to is I'm going to try to point it on the plan as best as I can, or maybe, Brian, you can help me. It's on the east side. There's a trail that comes in off of Three Oaks Road, uh, which the cross-section of that pavement is going to get enlarged to allow uh, an ambulance or full-blown fire truck to actually uh, have emergency access to the site okay. as well. So. Uh, Commissioner Graziano, if you wanted to any, I do have our traffic engineer on Zoom as well. So if you had further details, I'm glad um, no, to actually address those. I'm, I'm a traffic engineer. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, the other question, and I'll just throw it out there. In, in your planning for phase two, was any consideration given to a year-round facility? It's swimming I, I don't believe that was a requirement of the park district in their um, surveys and stuff. So. Great question. <laughs> um, no, very fair question. So I talked to before about our 2016 comprehensive master plan. When we went through that entire process, we had a, a litany of things that people wanted to see. Uh, an indoor 
pool facility was part of those requests uh, along with a number of, of items. Uh, as uh, you all know, uh, probably participated with the village here when you do a master plan, you have to take the collective of all of these ideas, you have to begin to pare things down into what makes the most sense both for the agency fiscally and what makes sense from the standpoint of what residents or the majority of residents uh, want to see. So that's a long answer to say that yes, uh, an indoor facility was discussed extensively by our board as part of a larger discussion as to what project we would undertake. Um, this is a project of size and we can only do one as I spoke before with our resources and so this was the project. So what we did talk about that. They come at considerable cost uh, to do those. So, but wonderful question. Mr. Graziano, any other questions? Good time. I think that'll All right. take care of it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Graziano. So, gentlemen, other questions? So, I'm double checking with Mr. Simmons um, before I formally close off the public portion. Did you get any um, requests? Uh, uh, no so? comments came in or uh, individuals rose their hands. All right. So, uh, we will close the public portion of our meeting, ladies and gentlemen. And, gentlemen, unless you have other questions, I'm about to call the motion. Mm -hmm. So the chair will entertain uh, a motion. Point of order, please. Three? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> the chair will entertain a motion to recommend the Village Board of Trustees, one, approval of a map amendment to rezone the subject property from E1 single family residential to PO Park and Open Space District upon its annexation into the village, and two, approval of a plot of dedication, and three, Approval of the Cary Grove Park Plan development consisting of approximately 75 acres of recreational land located at 1890 Three Oaks Road, subject to the conditions listed in the staff report. So moved. Second. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, any other questions on the motion? Mr. Simmons, would you call the roll? Wait, well, what are we voting on? I thought we were voting on three separate motions. Oh, no, I, I was calling it together, Mr. Graciano. That's what I was saying. Well, that's why that's what I was asking. Okay, so I, I wanted to call the motion in its totality, which I traditionally like to do, but if you have a concern about that, uh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm willing. I understand your point of view, Mr. I, I have no objection, just, you know, as you know, it bothers me to Well, let me just uh, double check with the rest of the members if anyone has any concerns. I think that's a fair comment. Um, hearing none, Mr. Graciano, we're going to continue to the roll. Okay. Thank you, though. <laughs> nope. Jasper? Yes. Yeah. Dudek? Yes. O'Loughlin? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Kretzmer? Yes. Williams? Yes. Corey? Yes. So, Mr. Jones, you have a favorable recommendation for your request, and um, I will say publicly thank you very much for what you and your team are doing for our community. You do, in fact, create a sense of community here in Cary, and we sincerely appreciate what you do for us. And I should say publicly to you, sir, that uh, we're still looking for a hockey rink. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Graziano will support that. I'm, I'm very confident of that. But thank you very much for a great presentation, uh, for the great work that you do, the men and women at the Cary Park District. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and um, Mr. Graciano, my apology to you, sir. I thought when you said three that I, you understood that I was calling it in the collective. I understand. No, I was like asking if we're going to do three motions. Yeah. All right. I thought you were trying to well, we'll have to get our hand signals. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you for your understanding. And before we conclude, gentlemen, um, I, I want to make sure that I give Mr. Simmons an opportunity to talk about an email that he had sent out today regarding education that we have been talking about here as a collective. And uh, just make sure that you've all received it. There's a process to subscribe to it. If you want to do that, you'll be reimbursed. But Mr. Simmons, if you want to comment further on that. Certainly, if you uh, saw the email or didn't see the email as yet, uh, the State Planning Association uh, for the Illinois APA is having their annual conference uh, next month in September. Uh, as part of that conference, they usually have a planning commission or zoning commission uh, training session. Uh, if any of the individuals on this commission are interested in participating in that process, the village will be willing to pay for that uh, free registration for it. It would be for uh, commitment for two days, uh, September 16th and September 17th, if I recall. Uh, but it gives you an opportunity to meet with other planning commissioners in the area, 
uh, just discuss uh, what the role of the commission is uh, from that perspective um, and just give you a better oversight um, as far as uh, different challenges that commissions you know may have experienced in other areas but it's a good way to meet with uh, a couple of uh, local planners generally run that with the, the um, consultants in the area and there are a couple of attorneys that are also a part of that process as well that can give uh, good insight as far as land use law and regulations and the role of the planning commission and zoning board from that perspective so if you're interested in it uh, let me know or if you want to register you can do so as well uh, the village will reimburse you for the $50 cost for that. Uh, this year, the entire conference is being done virtually, uh, so there's no need to attend anywhere. If you can just uh, log in from your personal computer, uh, so um, that will give more opportunity for um, people to participate. But if uh, if you're interested, let me know. Uh, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Simmons, for your support of this. Um, you've heard us talk about, gentlemen, education and the importance of it. So this is the uh, community's um, effort to make sure that that becomes a reality. So I want to say publicly thank you again to Mr. Simmons. Um, we appreciate it. So uh, without further to do, I just want to double check on one last item, Mr. Simmons, um, next meeting potentially for planning purposes. That would be uh, the second Thursday in September. Uh, we do have one case that's lined up for it. It'll be a, a fairly um, minor case, uh, but we do have a case that uh, I have received a petition for I believe it's September 10th, if I'm not mistaken, is the date. Uh, so uh, you will receive a packet for that um, in early September. Very good. All right, gentlemen, before we conclude, um, any other closing comments from anyone? Okay, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, conclude the meeting. So moved. Second. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Well, thank you.